anyone else's allergies just like hit them out of nowhere in the last two days. Oh my god, my eyes won't stop watering, I'm stuffy, can't breathe. Are you kidding me right now? I love not being able to breathe. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would change it up a little bit. I'm not going to be doing a makeup tutorial or anything makeup related. I am going to be showing you how I curl my hair. Most of the time I wear my hair either curly or I wear it straight. And I've been doing this for a long time so I feel like I kind of have my process down pat. There's already a ton of videos on YouTube already for beachy waves or loose voluminous curls, Victoria's Secret hair. Um, but I thought I would just show you my way of curling my hair. Because why not? This is my 10th video. I didn't think I was gonna make it past one. Thought I'd step outside the box and try a new makeup look, go a little bit darker on the eyes, add some color in with the red underneath. Mm, I don't know about this. Yeah, I don't know. If you would like me to recreate this look, then give this video a thumbs up, and I will definitely do that in an upcoming tutorial for you guys. We're gonna curl our hair. My hair. I'm gonna curl my hair. You can do whatever you want to your own hair. Let's do this. Let's get right into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is brush out my hair, and I'm going to be using a tangle teaser for that. It's pretty old, all the markings are worn off. So just so I don't have any knots in my hair when I go to section it off. So now that I have my hair brushed out, I like to section it off into three sections, but not right away. So the first section, I take my thumbs about an inch and a half above my ears, and I'll drag it back to separate the hair and I will clip up the top portion. And yes, I will look like an idiot. Perfect. So now we just have our first section of hair. I do have a ponytail dent. I'm not too worried about that because like I said, we are curling our hair. Um, so with the heat of the curling iron, it should just make it go away. So now we have our first section of hair and I'm not really too picky with curl placement. I'll just grab chunks of hair, maybe like a one inch gathering of hair and I'll start curling. I don't want too much hair because then my curling wand's gonna be on my hair for longer than what it needs to be to get the heat through the hair to grab onto that curl. And I don't wanna pick up small amounts of hair either because then the curls just look like perfect ringlets. So I'm gonna try and go for that messy beachy curly business. I'm going to be using a curling wand today. It's a 32 millimeter, I believe. It's by Pro Bliss. I got this at Marshalls like years ago. Um, so what I'm going to do is just grab that section of hair and pull it forward. I'm going to point my curling wand down and I'm just going to wrap it around a few times, leaving about two inches of hair from the bottom, not wrapped around the barrel. Just leave it there for a second. So then it kind of points down. I don't like it when my hair is completely curled and it goes all the way around and then you've got a bunch of pieces just kind of sticking out all over the place. So I like it when it points down a little bit. It looks a bit, a bit more beachy. If you find the curls a little bit too tight, I just take the end and I just pull it down. And then for my next section of hair, I just kind of sporadically grab little chunks of hair. Whatever works best. Usually I'll grab from the bottom and then start working my way up top. There's nothing worse than having all your curls done at the top and then you're pushing them out of the way to curl the ones underneath. Now for this I like to do all the curls in the same direction. I have alternated them where it goes towards your face and then away from your face. I just find that I touch my hair too much and I toss it around too much where it just by the end of the day it doesn't even look like curls, it just looks like a frizzy mess. So I find when I curl it away from my face, all in the same direction. You just get better uniform and better waves throughout your hair. So once again, I'm just going to point the barrel down, wrap it around a few times, leave the end out, leave it on for a few seconds. You can kind of judge by how much hair you grab, how long you need to leave it, and then just let it go. So then I'll work up towards the top here. Grab another section of hair. Now if your hair is really knotted or if you just want more of a smoother curl, then just take a comb, comb through a few times. And wrap it around. If you ever get too close to the root and you notice that it kind of pops out like this, while the hair is still warm, I just kind of go down and I pat it down. When I get to the top section of my hair and it does that, I just kind of leave it because I want the added volume right there unless I'm going for a really sleek look. A 
Another tip if you're looking for beachy waves as well, or if you're looking for a bigger curl, is leave more space in between the rotations of hair. The closer the hair is together, the tighter curl you're going to get, and the more part separated those rotations of hair are, the bigger the curl or the, it's not gonna be as tight, you know? So I'm just gonna go over and do the other side. When I get closer to the back of the head, I don't hold the wand down. I have a tendency to hold it more horizontal. Um, I, yeah, I just, I don't know. I haven't really noticed anything different in the curls or anything like that. I just find it's easier in terms of like placement, I guess. So I feel like you guys kind of have the gist of what's going on. So I'm going to fast forward through the rest of this and see you again for the second section of hair. So on to section two. So our last section ended about here. So I'm just going to go a couple inches above and section right there. Separate that hair. Once again, I'm just gonna pin it up or clip it up. Do you ever clip it up and then it like snags on one piece of hair and it's just like ripping right off your head? That's what that felt like. So same thing, I'm just going to grab a one inch section of hair. For the front pieces, I'm gonna pull them forward a little bit so the curl's sitting a little bit more forward. Going in the same direction as before, I'm going to curl away from my face, hold the wand down, try and keep a one inch gap between the rotations of hair. Oh, this one's gonna be super curly. Just grabbing another section of hair. Once I get closer to the top, I'm gonna to start combing out every single piece so my hair looks nice and smooth. So for the first two sections of hair, I like to curl really close to the root. I need the volume there. Your curls will fall throughout the day, so if I only get a little bit of curl on the underneath part, then more than likely halfway through the day, that piece of hair or all underneath is just gonna be straight. So the tighter these curls are, they'll fall nicely throughout the day and then the top portion it'll be a little bit looser but it's going to be more wavy i guess i don't know i don't know how to describe this this is just how i roll So this is what I'm talking about when you don't pull the ends down on the heated wand so it points down a little bit more. They tend to stick out to the sides. I'm going to take some product afterwards and kind of fix that. makeup on my hair and I don't care. It's like that every day. So for the top section, I'm going to part my hair off to the left. I always part it in the center or off to the left. If it is off to the left, then I never part it straight back. I always seem to do it back on an angle. So I'm gonna start here and go on an angle. Separate that here. There we go. Literally the same process as the other two sections. I'm just going to take the front part, pull it forward, comb it out, make sure it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to start the curl a little bit further down the hair because I don't want it super close to the root. So I'm going to start it there. 
And if I feel like that's too far away, then I just roll the barrel up and curl that end up a little bit more. Pull it down and just continue going all the way around your head. Sometimes I'll roll it back and forth too, just to get like a, a better curl. It's just a different technique. I, I say try everything. Try anything and try everything. Well, now the back I will always do close to the root. So as you can see on this side of my part, I have a lot more hair to curl. So just like that first section where you have a lot more hair back at the nape of your neck instead of at the sides, you just kind of grab from the bottom and then work your way up. So, I'll grab this little triangle up here first and curl that. So when I get close to the end of the last section, I just kind of end up with like this little square patch right here. Now this is where I really have to pay attention to the way that my hair is parted and where the curls are. I find if I grab like a really small piece of hair here and I curl it, it's just this really out of place stringy curl. So I like to grab a little bit more, like a bigger chunk of hair in the front so it incorporates a bigger curl. But first I'm going to start off with these pieces. This is the last section. I'm just gonna comb it out. And just wrap it like the rest of the others. I wanna make sure that this one isn't as tight, like it's nice and super loose in the front because if it's too tight, then it's just gonna be this perfect looking spiral curl in the front of your face and it just looks overly done. Ooh, I can sit up straight now. So I'm just gonna leave my hair alone for a few minutes and let the curls set. I don't wanna put any product in it just yet and weigh it down more, therefore losing my curls quicker than what I need to. I'm a complete knob. This has been sitting in front of me the whole time I've been doing my hair. I use it every single time I heat style my hair to protect my hair, except for today when I'm explaining how to curl my hair. I am ashamed my life. I, I, just, I don't even know what to do with myself right now, I'm sorry. I knew today was gonna to be an off day when I was brushing my teeth and I have an electric toothbrush and I totally forgot to turn it off before I pulled it out of my mouth and just everywhere, everywhere. I should have just got the hint. I like to spray a heat protectant in my hair before I put any heat on it because my hair is bleached and I wanna protect it as much as I possibly can and not get any damage because I'm still growing out a lot of previous color. So for that, I like to use the Milu Hair Shield by Davinus. Looks like this, I am running out. This is, I think about 45, $48, but this has lasted me a really long time. Do I feel like this product alone makes a difference? A little bit, I have used other hair shields. I will say the exact same thing. I do find this makes a little bit of a difference. I think there's more science behind it in protecting your hair than there is visible difference. I do feel like your overall hair care routine is what makes the biggest difference. So when it comes to styling my hair, I don't like the curls to be all in perfect uniform like this. I like to take my hands and run it through my hair. What I use for that is the Wee Oil by Davinus. It's just a really good nourishing oil. Do I have to block my face for it to focus? Yes, I do. And as you can see, it's $45. Now some might find that these are rather expensive, but I do find that these products last a lot longer than the drugstore products, and the quality of these products is a lot better. So if you're in the Hamilton area, I suggest checking out the Brunette Salon. My friend Kat, she carries all of these products. So I'm just gonna rub a quap, a quapple? I just used a couple drops, and I'm just gonna rub that throughout my hands, and I'm going to mainly focus that on the ends of my hair. My ends get super dry. And I'm kind of, I'm not completely smacking my hair together and rubbing it down, I'm just gently going through. And then I'll go to the top and start dragging it down. 
Might need a couple more drops of this on the other side. And just warm it up throughout my hands. You can overdo this product, so be very careful with any oil product, especially if you choose to use it close to your roots. I like to use it close to my roots just to tame the flyaways. I don't, I will not go in with like all of this. I'll go in with my ends first, as you can see. And then whatever's left over on my hands, I'll just gently go over my roots to tame those flyaways. I'll lift up under here and slick them back and then pull them forward. Just so there's no little baby fuzz going all over the place. And then I just toss all my hair up and hope for the best. So after the oil, I would just go in and gently hairspray the top, take my comb, tame the flyaways, and pull this hair forward. And I like it when the first curl here just kind of falls behind the second one because then it just kind of stays out of your face better. I'm just going to twist them together. Sorry, the hairspray that I'm using is the, oh God, Schwarzkopf Stylist Ultimate. Yes, I am almost out of this. I went to Walmart the other day to go grab another one and I didn't see it there. So I hope it's not discontinued. I really like this one. It has a really fine mist. So if I'm curling my hair on a daily basis, this is what I would do to my hair. Just a little bit of oil, a little bit of hairspray. I don't like to put too many products in because like I said, it weighs my hair down. I only like to wash my hair once a week, maybe twice a week if that, but my hair doesn't get greasy or weighed down too soon. On day five, I can still wear my hair down and it still looks fresh to death. Day six, day seven, I need a little bit of dry shampoo, but usually by like day seven, you know when your roots start to hurt no matter what direction they're going in, that's when you need to wash your hair. Today I'm going to take it a step further because I want to do more of a beachy toss of look. So I'm going to use this sea salt spray and I'm going to be using the Dabinus one for that. Oh, 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 and there we go. And this is one of their cheaper products. I believe this is only about 28 bucks. It'll last you a really long time because you don't need a whole lot of this. Because it is a sea salt spray, it will dry out your hair. So don't overuse it. It can look weird. So just a couple spritzes. Throw out my hair. mess it up a little bit underneath and it gives it more volume as you can see and it just looks a little more messy and knotted you know like you're on a boat you got some sea salt in your hair now my hair is just matted to fuck so that's it I hope you guys like my first hair tutorial I was gonna do a hair straightening tutorial but I just kind of feel like everyone knows how to do that my eyes watering like crazy right now didn't do this for the whole video and now it's gonna start really rude all the products that I use today will be listed in the description box down below as well as where to get them if you are in the Hamilton area if you want to see more videos for myself then hit that red subscribe button and if you like this video then give it a thumbs up and I yeah that's it that's all I got I don't know Good talk. Okay, bye.